Hello YouTube, it's Noisy Andrew and I'm off to look at a railway line. Well, there's actually not a lot of trains on the railway line at the moment, but there's a lot of work being done. The first railway line in Western Australia, the line we're going to go and have a look at, was uh, commissioned in 1881, built by an engineer, an Irish engineer, go the Irish, called John Robb. And um, it was done for £75,000 and it ran from the port of Fremantle to a settlement just east of the capital Perth called Guildford. I'm actually not sure if Perth was the capital then. We were still very much a colony. Wow. <laughs> if you ask some people around Australia now, uh, they still think we're a colony. Have you checked out our flag? Anyway, the current government is doing a lot of work to um, expand the railway network around Perth for commuters um, and like really it's, it's impressive. Um, they've been working on Bayswater Station which will become a three-way junction when this is finished uh, for most of a year now but five days ago they shut the line because the work they were doing could not be completed with the line running and when we get there you'll see why. Each afternoon for all of the last five days, I've gone and taken some photos just on my phone. Anyway, I thought it would be interesting to share them with you guys so we can both, both, do I have one viewer? So we could see exactly how progress is going. So here's how the station looked before they shut the line down. You can see they had to build some big retaining walls, put some piers up, and then crane these massive concrete beams um, up on top of the piers, which will hold the railway line. This is actually quite a long way above where the old rail bed used to be, maybe three metres higher. Anyway, a job like this takes a cast of thousands. I can't imagine organising this many people, and this is only one end of the job. There's like, meetings like this are all over the place. Anyway, the first place I went to take some photos is at the western end of the work, looking east, near the Hotham Street Bridge. And um, if you go for a little walk around here, there's a hedge and there's a hollow in the hedge. And you can go down without trespassing uh, to a fence line and get a pretty good view of eastward back up the Midland Line uh, towards uh, the Bayswater Station. And you can see in this view, uh, not much work has been done yet, but there's a bunch of prep work happening. Everyone's getting ready. The track is still there. Um, the following day when I went, the track had been removed. All the sleepers had gone as well. Tires, I think they call them in America. Um, and some of the stanchions have been removed for the catenary. Uh, the following day, all the ballast had been removed as well. Um, basically what they needed to do was dig down a reasonable level of uh, soil and then replace the soil uh, with recompaction. Um, you can't just dump soil, level it out and put stuff on it. You need to compact it down. So there would have been rollers and things going up and down. Here you can see a bunch of excavators working. I think they needed to dig a whole lot of trenching and uh, uh, instrument pits for the signaling system. And then the final thing they do is the top layer that they're going to lay the rails on or the sleepers on. And this is crushed limestone, once again, nicely compacted. Then at the other end of the show, uh, at the eastern end looking west, um, I took some photos of the approaches to the station as you head west. Now, as I said, the line is very high compared to what it was. So they have had to build up enormous amounts of earth that the the earthworks at the uh, this end of the project uh, are monstrous hey they they there will have been trucks coming in and out of here vibrating rollers and machines moving up and down building up uh, uh, the the track bed to the abutment at the eastern end of the station um, because once again you don't want your railway track or anything that you've built moving once you've built it because the soil has like uh, recompacted itself or moved. Um, a bit hard to see in these pictures here. Uh, I got there quite late in the day on the fourth day. But in this picture here, you can see the earthworks up against that um, uh, basically sound barrier wall there. So the trains don't annoy the people on that side 
very much. And here you can see more of the earth has been piled in. Once again, there will have been rollers and water trucks going up and down here, uh, getting a level of compaction that can be relied upon over hundreds of years. You can see the flat level in the middle of this uh, picture here where the rollers have been going up and down. They'll put more more um, more earth on top of this and re-roll and recompact and more earth on top of that and re-roll and recompact so that the whole um, earthworks up to the uh, station abutment will be like super strong super strong um, I have no idea how many cubic meters of earth would have been used for this it's a massive amount I think it's going to be four tracks wide here now this is a sort of a midpoint that I decided to park up and have a look at every day I missed the first day because I didn't think about parking here but there's like a a nice hill and you can see this is looking west towards the Hotham Street Bridge um, and there's quite a bit of digging and carry on here as well because I, once again I think they're um, putting services under the ground for signaling control um, probably some services for the houses around here too that have to be managed and, and changed and so there's like excavators and loaders and skid steers and what have you going everywhere you can see the railway track that's been removed um, stacked uh, in the foot of this picture um, and once again progress is getting made the the site is becoming cleared and leveled and ready for uh, track beds to be laid I imagine at this end here the two lines that come under the Hotham Street Bridge will split into four. Oh, actually here we are this is where the lines were cut just under the Hotham Street Bridge now this picture here or these images here are from the underpass at Leach Street um, Leach? I can't remember the name of the street but anyway there's an underpass that has been redone and what they did was they craned in a whole lot of precast concrete arches uh, for the rail to go across these sit on a big concrete uh, footing as well and this 250 ton crane um, was lifting the arches in one day so I stood there with a lot of other people and uh, watched as people maneuvered 25 tons of concrete apiece I understand uh, into position so they put these on uh, the solid concrete footings that were already uh, poured in in situ um, and they will put a like a, a pad over the seams between each one so that moisture and sand doesn't creep through so it's so it's like water tight earth tight breeze tight uh, there always was an underpass here, but this is obviously a much more substantial one. You could drive a light vehicle through here. This is the old underpass at the Bayswater station where it used to be. Um, now being used to like store all the broken bits and pieces that you would find around a site, I guess. And here are all the sleepers. Well, a lot of them. I think I found some other stacks as well. This is just basically there's a vacant block just full of old sleepers. One of the things they have to do a lot of is new signaling. This junction has going to have a lot of trains. It's going to be busy. So there's obviously a whole bunch of new signals being installed and coils and coils of multi-core cable to like uh, power and run those signals. This actually is a picture, thank you Google uh, Earth, uh, of what the Bayswater station looked like before all of this started. It was basically a shed with two lines running, or an island platform with two lines running either side of it. And this picture here is from the same spot um, a few days ago. You can see the new structure is way, way more significant. Adjacent to the station is the very famous Bayswater Bridge that regularly catches trucks, a bit like a certain bridge in the US. This bridge will be taken away. And of course, if you're not careful, you'll get yourself a flat, probably running over one of those bits of rebar or survey stake or something carelessly. So, finishing up, I took this picture next to where the sleepers were stacked and it gave me the thought, what is the collective noun for Volvo loaders? Please put your answers in the comments below. If you're curious about this, I'll do a video about once a week of the progress of this and you can follow along. I find this enormously interesting. Um, it's obviously going to be something quite valuable for Western Australia.